so this is my show at Deluge Contemporary Art and it's up for the next month. It goes to October 6th and we had the opening last night. It's very fun and it's called Somewhere Beyond Nowhere and uh, the title just comes from the idea of retreat and the notion of just um, going beyond modernity and retreating or a back road adventure and there's 15 C prints, they're quite large, 30 by 30 inches in the show. And I printed them myself by hand at the BAMP Center doing a residency. So that was a good experience. And so yeah, we've hung 15 of them from the series here. And most of them are in BC, a few in Alberta, there's some as far as Ontario and even Holland. So it's the first body of work that I've ever done that's not site-specific or about one specific place. And I think that really kind of grew out of work that I'd done in, in my master's and wanted to focus a little bit more broadly on this um, notion of just exploring um, the landscape and, and how we use it. And a lot of the places are places I've gone back to that I went as a child and then have revisited. And then also some of the places are places that people have just taken me to them on the island and, um, and such. So a lot of time in my car, um, just on back roads, dirt roads, um, looking for things and, uh, and just being in the landscape itself. So yeah, so some of them I think range from images that are fairly derelict or um, almost bizarre um, to things that are places that are a lot more about perhaps uh, Places you could actually see yourself retreating to or staying in. So it looks at a lot of uh, structures within the landscape, most of them fairly temporary, temporary structures within the landscape, but also just land use in general in terms of, of how we use like crown land, private land, native land, very differently. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to have the show here. Um, big fan obviously of all the work that Deluge does, the, the artists that they've supported over the years and um, yeah, it's good. I could talk maybe um, a little bit about a couple of them. Um, this one here I mentioned is, uh, well it's in the, in the forest but it's a huge paper mache whale that was actually a sign uh, for Port Renfrew. So again another destination that's sort of like the end of the road and I went actually back looking for the sign that I think some of the high school students had made that was sort of at the beginning when you first enter um, Port Renfrew and it wasn't there and then I just sort of stumbled across it um, on the roadside uh, sort of off the main drive and I uh, was pretty excited that it was there and, and just saw it in the landscape. So I really um, was quite drawn to that image. Um, I'll just show you one that's too over here. We talk about this um, Tyvex one here. Um, this is one I shot, I guess, early, I think it was in the fall. And I went up uh, by myself to, to Tofino to take some photographs up there. And I remember this one community that was very remote, uh, sort of in between Tofino and um, Euculet, on these sort of back dirt roads that are all interconnected. And I, I couldn't exactly find where it was, and I, I kept driving around, and then I came across this other community, which is called Salmon Beach. And uh, it's a very interesting community. People have these homesteads here that are building, and I really was quite drawn to the, the Tyvex um, installation, or the, the exterior uh, installation there, and, and the notion that you come across in a lot of these structures, uh, especially in North America, in, in a lot of colder places. And then it, it seems like sometimes the homes are, are never really finished or the cabins are never completed. And uh, I'm very drawn to those sort of nostalgic notions of the Trillium trailer. And um, I think a lot of that work references this idea of going camping or going in a trailer with your family. And I did a lot of that and, and hiking with my family. So a lot of that is very nostalgic for me. And when I'm showing the work to a lot of people, um, regardless of where they, they're from, I think people recognize things within the landscape where they say, oh, that looks like um, our family land, or it references a place that we used to go, or a cabin that we used to have. And I like that notion of it being connected to um, a sense of memory um, or familiarity within the landscape. I'll say a little bit about um, these two prints here. Uh, the one on the right here is actually a self-portrait. 
and it's, I, I've titled it Near Shoot Lake, and um, the lake itself is actually called Lebanon Lake. I thought that was <laughs> kind of a bizarre title for it, and Shoot Lake is actually a really uh, rustic, um, I don't want to call it a resort, but there's cabins and, and places you can, you can fish, and it's up above Okanagan Lake, up above Naramata. And as you can see, the landscape has been really altered um, by a series of forest fires that have gone through. Um, and that, if you're familiar with the area, there's the Kettle Valley Railway, uh, which is really affected in a series of trails. And it's, it's just very beautiful up there and, and quite remote. And you go up from the valley, and the landscape changes so drastically from the very, very lush Okanagan and the grapes and all the orchards to this um, landscape here, which has been really altered by the forest fires. Um, so I like this one in that sense of just being completely alone within this landscape. And obviously I had help taking the photo and stuff, but it was just, and when I see it large, like this format, I guess also just the color of it comes through. Um, and part of what I do love about, about C prints and just that intensity of the medium format film and stuff. And um, Deborah actually um, from Duluth here suggested we hang these two together. Because um, this one was actually taken in Holland, and it's obviously a very, very different use of the land. Um, and this is in northern Holland, and it's um, in Holland, I mean, they're very, very resourceful at, at using all of the land um, within the country. And because I think partially because it's such a small country, the landscape is constantly being altered for what they um, need it for. And this is a completely man-made um, campground here. So you go and there's people that are camping all around. And then this is a, an older water slide, which seems so bizarre. <laughs> and then um, I love the people in the middle. But it was also actually right beside a uh, completely plasticized mountain that people were skiing down in the middle of the summer. And then there was like a sort of a fake mountain that had been created for um, rock climbing. So there's this whole sort of like camping village, which was pretty exciting. And, and all just for families to go and, and retreat there and, and to um, sort of vacation within the landscape, which I think is pretty unique too. So I like that and just the, the sense of how vastly different it is, like looking at somewhere from Canada that's very remote and then somewhere like Holland, but the pe people are still wanting to make this connection with the landscape and, and to retreat with, um, with their family or be by themselves and, and to experience um, nature or even the wilderness in some way. So I think the show in it itself really looks at sort of our, our markings as, as humans within that landscape and how we're able to use it and, um, and to start sort of development with that as it extends sort of beyond the cities and further afield. So.